Let's solve Unit 6 Software Engineering questions. Test suit consists of In software development, a test suit is a collection of test cases that are intended to be used to test a software program to show that it has some specified set of behaviors. The suit is about the set of test cases. Option number 3 will be the right answer. Boundary cases are like boundary conditions and defect cases are like faulty conditions and set of nest cases is not relevant here. In order to test a software program to show that it behaves in certain way, they develop many test cases. So that test cases together, the collection is called as test suit. Next question, level 0 DFD is also called as the first data flow model, sometimes called as a level 0 DFD or context diagram represents the system as a whole. So what does level 0 DFT mean? It's a context diagram. Option 3 will be the right answer. Subsequent data flow diagrams, there are level 1 and level 2. They refine the context diagram providing increasing detail with each subsequent level. So let's also learn about the other three options here. A use case captures the interaction that occurred between the producers and consumers of information and the system itself. So they used to say actors and use cases. So what does a particular entity or a particular system or a particular person is going to do? What are the functions associated with that actor will be taken? You will have math stick called as actors and there will be use cases. What are the activities that this actor will do will be given in the use cases. Sequence diagram indicates how events cause transitions from object to object. Even in some of the PYQs we have seen here some object will be there, here one object will be there. From here there will be some interactions and from here there will be some interactions. So they will be giving in this lane. So the interaction will occur from this object to that object. We have also solved certain problems in sequence diagram. Prototype is a model of the system. It serves as the first system. So it's a model of the system that we want. Level 0 DFD is associated with context diagram where the system is represented as a whole. Next question, the selection of spiral model based on characteristics of requirements. So let's see about the spiral model. So we start with communication. Then we go for planning, modeling, construction and deployment. There is also another spiral model that is given in the old edition of the same software engineering book written by Roger Pressman. The spiral model is an evolutionary software process that couples the iterative nature of prototyping with controlled and systematic aspects of waterfall model. So here we have four steps. Determine objectives and identify alternate solution, identify and resolve risks, develop next level of product, review and plan for the next phase. This goes on in an iterative way. That's what they say, iterative nature. What requirements makes us to select that this project will need or this product will need a spiral model? So we can get into this diagram to evaluate these statements. Are requirements easily understandable and defined? So here we are determining the objectives and identifying the alternative solution. And here it is not about the understanding or the definition of requirements. So A is not relevant to this particular diagram. Next, do we change requirements quite often? When we have changing requirements, definitely we will need a spiral model because it comes to the same stage again and again. It happens in an iterative way. So in that way, B can be included as a requirement part. Then, can we define requirements early in the cycle? Not so, because here it is in an iterative approach. We need not define requirements completely together. Once we review and plan for the next phase, again we have to go for identifying the alternate solutions for certain problems or we will determine the objectives for the next phase. So requirements keep changing and requirements will be needed for every phase. In that case, we cannot define everything early in the cycle. So that's why we are ruling out this. 
requirements are indicating a complex system to be built yes when you go face by face first you will develop one part then you will go for a review and then plan for the next phase which says that the system is getting complicated so here the requirements are indicating a complex system to be built is also right so we will go for a spiral model when the requirements keep changing for different phases of the same project at the same time as the requirements keep increasing or keep changing we can understand that a complex system has to be built taking b and d into consideration option number 3 b and d only will be the right answer it provides the potential for rapid development of increasingly more complete versions of the software the spiral model is a realistic approach to the development of large scale systems and software so this is the clue to indicating a complex one to be built because software evolves as the process progresses the developer and customer better understand and react to risks at each evolutionary level evolutionary in the sense each iteration a prominent feature of the spiral model is handling unforeseen risks that can show up much after the project has started that's why it is in the spiral form as for phase 1 i can identify the risk and give some solution and solve it so when i get into phase 2 i might get some risk from phase 1 so i have to solve 1 and 2 together in my second phase this is what they say it can handle unforeseen risks that show up much after the project has started so this model is good at handling such risks so that's why when the requirements keep changing we may require this model at the same time it is suitable for developing large scale systems and softwares next question the steps for analysis and design of object oriented system first let's look at all the diagrams together usually we start with the users view which is at the center of the diagram here so we have four kinds of views apart from the users view and whatever diagrams that are coming under those views are listed so have a note of it now we'll get into solving the question use case diagram help you determine the functionality and features of the software from users perspective so when you solve you start with the use case next an activity diagram depicts the dynamic behavior of a system or a part of a system through the flow of control between actions that the system performs so when i have use cases definitely there will be an activity being followed because this will depict the dynamic behavior of the system so imagine activity diagram as a flow chart in plain terms i can say so that says the flow of control between actions so it is similar to a flow chart when i say there is a use case called login then we go for an activity diagram which says i have to give my username give my password if it matches with the database i will be let into the system if it doesn't match if either the username or the password is wrong then i'll be thrown out of the system stating it is invalid so definitely after use case you have activity so they have combined this together in option c option c comes first the only option that has c first is option number 4 so option number 4 will be the right answer the rest of the options can be ruled out each interaction diagram realizes the behavior of a single use case so after you have a use case you go for interaction diagrams so there are two kinds of interaction diagrams one is the sequence diagram that is used to show the dynamic communication between objects during execution of a task the other kind of interaction diagram is collaboration diagram which shows both the structural as well as behavioral aspects explicitly so next to use case we have interaction so let me make it as use case and activity together and from there we go for interaction and this will be option a so usually you will have a use case like this and take this to be an actor has three functions to be done so f1 f2 and f3 so regarding f1 there will be an interaction diagram it can be a sequence or a collaboration diagram to show the dynamic communication between objects so what are all the things involved in f1 will be described so this is how the next order comes 
let's continue a class diagram shows how a system is structured rather than how it behaves so behavior is over with interaction diagram now we are getting into the static part a class diagram models the static structure of a system it comprises a large number of class diagrams and their dependencies dependencies in the sense how they are associated or how they are related to each other so in this case we can mark class diagram as the next one so e comes next from class i will be able to get object so with the clue here in b we'll move on further an object diagram models a group of objects and their links at a point of time showing the instances of the things in a class diagram so after i draw a class diagram from the class diagram i will be able to make object diagrams so objects are nothing but instance of a single class next a state chart diagram is normally used to model how the state of an object changes in its lifetime so if you want a state chart diagram to be drawn definitely you will need an object diagram from the class diagram so from e we are moving to b a component diagram can be used to represent the physical structure of an implementation in terms of various components of the system so if you get to see some books they will tell you what are the components it can be an interface it can be a particular module so component comes in with option d the deployment diagram shows the environmental view of a system how it is getting deployed in some environment so use case can be taken as analysis what you need from the system is what we analyze regarding design it starts with the static structure of the system you are modeling a class diagram you are modeling an object diagram state chart diagram component diagram and a deployment diagram i have given you how these two are related how class and object are related why does state chart come with object because it needs to tell you how the state of an object changes for that you need to know what are the objects involved in the system so obviously you need a object diagram that's why they have grouped it together like this next question the prototyping model has the sequence so let's take this prototyping model this is taken from an older edition of the same software engineering book first we have requirements gathering from that we enter a cycle here in this cycle we have quick design building prototype customer evaluation of that particular prototype and we refine requirements using the customer suggestions and then we go on designing again and again so when the customer accepted it we go for a general design general implementation general testing and maintenance of the particular project so they say the prototype development will be till here and after that this goes as iterative development because we keep on refining things after being accepted by the customer so the customer acceptance is only in the prototype development stage and not in the iterative development stage but let's just map we have customer evaluation here we have quick design here then c requirements is here we have implement here and design here let me order this requirements is c quick design is b customer evaluation is a design is e and implement is d this is my order from the diagram c b a e and d but there is no option similar to this sequence but how people have interpreted this answer they are fine with requirements after requirements they go with quick design they are fine after quick design they get into implement stage they say this implement is nothing but building the prototype and so they bring d here after d they go with customer evaluation which is a and then they end up with design called e after the customer has accepted so this question has been given option 3 as the right answer c b d a e this is what they have given but regarding the diagram from which this question is taken this is the 
correct sequence. If this implement is going to be building prototype, then why is an implement phase given here is my question. The next question. Given below are two statements. In reuse oriented model, modification of old system parts appropriate to the new requirements. The second statement, integration of the modified parts are not possible into the new system. So let's learn about reuse oriented development model. So reuse oriented development is based on systematic reuse where systems are integrated from existing components. So the name itself will tell you we are reusing it from existing things. They look for designs of code that are similar to what is required. They just modify them to their requirement and incorporate them into their system to identify components of all system that are most suitable for reuse. So I am going to identify the components that are needed to understand all system components. I have to understand them. I have to modify all system components to achieve new requirements. So since I am going to reuse, I have to modify accordingly to the current project that I am working and then to integrate all of the modified parts into the new system. So integration is a part of reuse oriented model and the second statement is telling it is not possible to integrate which is absolutely false. And in the first statement modification of all system appropriate to the new requirements is what this point states. All system components are modified to achieve new requirements. So this statement is true. From this we can mark option number 3. Statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is incorrect as the right answer. With this we are completing unit 6 questions.